All right, one of the next steps that I wanted to go over was to get ready to take the rock or shaft off. So what we've done is we've got most of the components out of the way, getting ready to take the cylinder head off. In this application, what they have you do, because this engine comes from the truck industry, is remove the starter. The four bolts, as you can see, there's the four bolts that hold the starter in, you know. And once the starter is out of position, then there is a plate that goes over that. It'll show that in the book. And um, that plate then gives you the ability to insert a cranking tool into the flywheel, which you could ratchet with a uh, half-inch ratchet. So in this application, they show that. They also um, have a picture in the book up above where there's supposed to be some kind of a timing area that you could see, but um, you need some reference to top dead center of the crankshaft, where the crankshaft is. So there really isn't one here. And in the book, it goes through that picture. So here is the picture in the book putting that plate in, your cranking tool. Up here is where you pulled the starter off, and there's a, a, a hole down here, it says, where you could put that barring tool in on a different application, and then your top dead center mark is here. But this really doesn't apply to this engine. When you go a little bit further down, they give you another option, which is there's a window, and it doesn't really tell you where that window is, so you gotta look around on the engine. So I'm going to come around the other side, it's on the back side of the engine, and I've taken the plate off, and on the back side, here's the you know reverse gear of the engine, we come around on the port side of the engine, and there is a, um, an opening here, and you can see the flywheel, and then you see that slot. So that's going to tell us exactly where to time the engine to get us to um, top dead center is there are marks on the camshaft so right here there's a mark and then further down around the corner you probably won't be able to see it very well but there's another mark there's a two down there you can see so up here that mark is a four all right so I need to bar the engine over to bring the timing mark up between these two lines so So now let's look at our timing marks. So first of all, um, now I have something new in the window and that looks like a zero and I'm pretty close to the middle of the zero. Yeah, there we go. So now I can see that top dead center line and it is close to the center really close to the center if I'm looking right down at it um, to that mark. So we're pretty much dead on up here that I can see and over here on the other side of the engine it looks pretty well. Now there's a final alignment which is for the camshaft here. So when we look at the camshaft here, here's the idler gear which isn't shown really in the picture. But here's the camshaft gear, so we're looking at the end of it. Um, and it does not show the viscous dampener that's bolted to the gear. That's taken out of the equation. But it says here, place the drive so that the reference hole in the timing gear plate lies between the drive markings. So the line on the two teeth have marks on it should line up in between a dowel pin hole on the cover, as it says. So. The two marks here and here, and then there's the dowel pin, okay? So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more and then see if we can get a better visual on it. Maybe up closer, not as good as the other one. So let's go, yeah, that's pretty good. So I would say it's pretty much dead center on at this point. So what that means now is that the gear train is timed. This gear is an idler gear. It's on a giant bearing, so it really doesn't have, it's an intermediate gear. So you have a drive gear down here, 
and then another gear behind it that drives this gear that then drives the camshaft. So I don't have to worry about this gear because that's the crankshaft. The crankshaft down there is timed. That means the gear train up here is timed. What I'm really in uh, need to do is when the crankshaft is timed, then I'd have to install the camshaft, rotate the camshaft until A, that mark up there is lined up with TDC. And also my secondary would be that these two marks are lined up with that dowel pin. It's like a double indemnity that makes it so you know that the cam is timed properly and the crankshaft is at top dead center. So that, at that point, you could take it apart and I would not disturb the engine at that point so that when you put it back together, it's already pre-timed. So pre-time the engine before you put it back together. Um, to get to this point where I wanted to go over removal of the rocker shaft. So number one, I really need to time the engine, which I posted in another video. So what I need to do is I'm still gonna have some tension on these when I release this. So what you don't ever wanna do is take an impact gun and just start loosening like this in length. What's gonna happen is you're gonna have a tremendous amount of tension on these springs and it will actually bend the rocker shaft. So the way to do it, like the book says, is start in the center and work your way out and quarter turn three or even an eighth of a turn to start is to loosen this bolt, loosen this bolt, loosen the end bolt, loosen the end bolt, loosen the center bolt, loosen the next one, loosen the next one. And then just keep going in that sequence so you equally release the pressure on this. So I'm gonna do that next in preparation to take the rocker shaft and get the rocker shaft out of the way. What I'll show you is if you had an injector, let's say you had that injector, and what I wanna do is just change that injector. I don't need to pull all the other stuff off the engine. I'm gonna add that into this as well. We're just gonna pretend we need to change this injector. So taking this off, timing the engine, then we'll go back and we'll reset our valve timing after that as well. 